Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. Medieval 2 is a stellar game in the series, but what's even better than Medieval 2 are the mods that have been made for it over the years. From globe-spanning campaigns to Lord of the Rings, from the Bronze Age to the Victorian, Medieval 2, in my honest opinion, has the most complete and polished mods of any of the Total War games in the series, and just for this alone, it deserves to be the greatest of all time. I've come covered loads of Medieval 2 mods on this channel so far and I've got a lot more to get through, but today I wanted to do a bit of a two birds one stone and cover a few in my all time top 5 list of Medieval 2 mods everyone needs to play. I won't give any spoilers here, but the mods I've chosen are based on my experience and what I believe should be a good balance of content, stability, and polish. Hopefully you agree and if there's something you've never seen before, you'll give it a try. For all the mods that I've covered, it's not often that I spotlight and talk about a mod that sticks close to the original feel and experience of the game, but Total Vanilla Beyond is definitely one such mod worth including in this list. With new playable factions like Norway, Cilicia, the Kumans, and the Apache, with a slightly expanded and much fuller campaign map, with dozens if not hundreds of balanced new units and tons of bug fixes and crash fixes as well, this mod definitely lives up to its name as a vanilla plus experience. Most important of all, the mod fixes the pikemen issue of Medieval 2, where pikemen inexplicably just drop their pikes in favor of melee weaponry. Here that issue no longer exists, so pikemen are functioning units, which is just such a massive quality of life upgrade. Now that being said, the one thing I'm not a massive fan of is the reachable America here, which I mean yes, this is in vanilla Medieval 2 as well, but the way it's visible here can easily lead to wild alternate histories of the Apache suddenly invading Europe instead of conquering the rest of America, which, okay, yes, any of this can happen in base game vanilla as well, but I'm just, I'm not a big fan of it. Despite that though, Vanilla Beyond knows what it's doing and it does it well. You're still playing a mostly vanilla medieval 2, but you've got a variety of new interesting factions, new units that all can lead to a lot of replayability. You've got a ton of scripting that some may be hit and some miss, but mostly adds to the overall experience. And most importantly, you've got a lot more unit balancing, bug fixing, etc., which I think is a major plus if you're looking for a vanilla style mod. Stainless Steel is a mod that has always been and always will be known as the king of Medieval 2 mods, especially with the Historical Improvement Project. The mod was first released back in 2011 and started off as a simple combination of tons of little mods here and there to provide a proper full overhaul of the game. In the years up to 2017, the mod grew and evolved into improving every single aspect of the game to make Medieval 2 more historically accurate, more replayable, and especially more challenging. The modern, most up-to-date version of the mod is the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project, which adds brand new campaign mechanics, dozens of new factions, units, improves AI behavior, and a lot more. Characters can now become nobles with titles that change and go through succession. The map has been expanded to cover more of the north and east. There are hundreds of new historical events and dilemmas that the player will have to face and loads of new custom battle maps as well to enjoy the visually stunning battles. If there was ever a mod you would try for the first time in any Total War game, I would honestly say it's probably Stainless Steel. Years of dedication and hard work have created what is arguably one of the most polished and stable mods of the game and the series. Every campaign I've played has been filled with memorable moments and battles, and that is not something easily achieved in Total War, let alone Total War modding. Stainless Steel may be at fourth place on my list today, but for me, it will always be known as the king. Now, Medieval 2 has plenty of mods that change the time period of the game to settings of immense conflict and intrigue. And my third place spot on this list has to be shared by two of my favorite time period overhaul mods, Lucium Total War and Europa Barbarorum 2 both of which offer hundreds if not thousands of hours of brilliant fun set in the late 17th and 18th centuries and 272 BC respectively. The modders have put in a lot of work to make the warfare of these respective time periods work in Medieval 2, with Lucium especially doing an amazing job of recreating the projectile physics of the time period and balancing that around all the other types of units you can use in the 17th and 18th centuries. And going from Medieval to Ancient isn't an easy thing 
anything either, but while EB2 did have its original EB1 to lean on in Rome Total War, the sheer variety of their units and how they fight on the battlefield is still incredible. The most astonishing aspect of these mods though, and mods like it to be fair, is how much attention is paid to historical accuracy and authenticity. So much effort has gone into depicting their settings with accurate events, characters, building trees, units and unit visuals, custom battle maps, even assets on the campaign maps like cities and wonders. These mods are not only fun for their gameplay, but they are immersive. That's the point here. The developers have gone through blood, sweat and tears to build build a world from scratch, and both Lucium and EB2 deserve to be recognized for their incredible work and how fun their mods really are. Now I know I've covered Insularis Draco recently, but I just keep coming back to it because, you know what, it's a mod that is actually 100% better than an actual Total War game. Thrones of Britannia had some really good ideas, don't get me wrong, I love the recruitment system, but I get miserably bored within 20 turns with little to no investment in victory conditions or short term objectives, the unit variety is mediocre and really detracts from its replayability, and there are dozens of well established Total War mechanics that are just plain absent from the game. Insularis Draco is a much, much better version of TOB, and it's recently released, which means it's going to continue to get new updates and improvements with dynamic religious and political systems, with an excellent array of playable factions, all with unique circumstances, superb challenges, and an immense roster of units. This mod is everything TOB should have been and more, and I'm constantly impressed by its content with every playthrough I go through through. There aren't many mods out there that get a lot of things right on its first release, but Insolaris is definitely one of them, and that is an amazing thing. Between Plague, becoming a High King, witnessing the fall of the Roman Empire, repelling the Visigoth invasion, and tons more challenges and events, responsive AI, active strategy, interesting tactics in the battles, I can honestly say there's not a lot of other mods out there that impress me as much as this one, which again is saying a lot. Finally, the top spot for best mod of all time for Medieval 2, and hell, this could be the best mod of all time, period, has to go to Third Age and its various submods. Third Age not only builds a completely new universe from scratch, it's balanced, it's stable, it's polished, and it's the best fantasy universe you could ever want to play in a Total War game. The Lord of the Rings is so well depicted here, and the gameplay is just so crisp and well done that I often boot it up on a weekly basis to remind me of what perfect modding looks like. With hundreds of new units, hundreds of bugs and crash fixes, especially with DAC, Ago, or MOS, Third Age is the quintessential mod for all Total War to look up to. It's got masses of content, challenging AI and mechanics, it forces the player to really think strategically about their playstyle against their enemy, both in the campaign and in the battles, and it comes with some of the most breathtaking units and battles you'll ever play in a Total War mod. This is essentially the lore of the Rings Total War that CA should have and still could officially create. And while there are some more modern versions of a Lord of the Rings Total War with Dawnless Days on Attila, Lord of the Rings Total War with Rome Remastered and others, Third Age is still the best, most complete and polished Middle Earth experience you can play. Now all of these mods are very, very much recommended. If you haven't heard of them before, if you like what you see, you've got Medieval 2, you've been thinking about picking it up, these are mods you absolutely need to try out. But I've also got some honorable mentions as well. For more fantasy style mods like Third Age, definitely check out Elder Scrolls or Game of Thrones Total War. For more historical Total Wars, there are so many, but for me, the top is Bullet Steel, Broken Crescent, and Sardom's. And for something totally wild and unforgettable, definitely try out Planet War. And that's it for today guys. This has been my top 5 mods for Medieval 2 that I think every single player needs to put some time to for some excellent memorable Total War gameplay. I've dropped a link below for every mod I've mentioned today, including any sub mods for Third Age as well, and some of them have Discord server as well, which you can check out through their respective mod DB pages. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, do give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. And let me know what you think about my top 5 mods that I've listed here, and what your top 5 mods are for Medieval 2 as well. Subscribe for more Total War content gameplay and news just like this, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.